Hi, Year 5. We're going to have a look at history now and we're going to keep thinking about the Anglo-Saxons and we're going to see if we can describe their key achievements and capabilities today. So I want you to think, first of all, about what is an achievement? What is a capability? And the statement at the bottom might just help you think about how you might talk about achievements and capabilities. So pause the video now and have a think about those things. OK, so an achievement is something that you have success in, something that you can achieve. And a capability is something that like a skill that you have that enables you to have that success. So I don't know, I could say um, I have achievements in swimming because I'm capable of doing the front crawl really well or holding my breath for a long time underwater. Um, I have achievements in art because I'm capable of looking really carefully with my eyes and noticing shadows and things like that. So you might want to pause the video again and see if you can fill in um, what your achievements and capabilities would be or someone else's using that sentence. But I want us to think now um, a little bit more about history. And so I want us to think about achievements that might relate to civilizations and civilizations are groups of people. And so I want us to think about the past. So think about which civilizations you know about. You've learned about the Romans. You have definitely learned about the ancient Greeks, uh, sorry, the ancient Egyptians. You might have learned about the ancient Greeks or maybe even the ancient Mayans. Think about um, people that you've learned about. And I want you to think now, um, in your opinion, which civilizations, so which of those groups of people had achievements in which areas, okay? So if I just give you an example, you might say something like, OK, I know the Romans had achievements in engineering because they were capable of building aqueducts and roads. OK, so pause the video now and have a think about that. OK, so moving on to the next um, task, then we're going to actually explore the lives of two important Anglo-Saxons to try and think about uh, what the greatest Anglo-Saxon achievements and capabilities were, because we can learn a lot from studying and um, looking at the lives of particular people in history. So what I would like you to do is pause the video now and I'd like you to make some notes on a mind map as we learn about those two people and as we learn about what those capabilities and achievements actually are. Now I've given you a little example there um, you know, you might want to put Anglo-Saxon achievements and capabilities in a bubble in the middle of your page. And then you'll have lots of different um, lines coming off kind of as you write them about the different capabilities. And just make some notes. Don't feel like this has to be really neat. Don't feel like you've um, got to do them in a particular order. Just, you know, focus on what is um, important to you. And actually, I might just stop sharing my screen for the moment and just show you that I did this too. Um, I created my mind map to kind of show you <laughs> so that I knew what I was going to, to talk about. OK, so let me share my screen again and then we'll be ready to go for it. OK, so first I'm going to ask you, do you know the names of any Anglo-Saxon kings? Shout them out if you do. Well, we are going to look at a particular king um, and he was the first Brett Walder. OK, can you remember what Brett Walder meant from a previous lesson? Or well, remember that it means like over king, because if you remember, the Anglo-Saxons had different kingdoms um, and they had different kings of the different kingdoms. But the Bretwalder was like the, the, ki the king of kings, if you see what I mean. He was the one in charge. So we're going to look at who King Offa actually was, what he achieved, what he was capable of. And that's going to help us know what we can learn from him about what the Anglo-Saxon achievements were and what they were capable of. If you want to look at the links that I'm going to show you or find some more information, then you can use the link on the page or on Padlet to help you. OK, I'm just going to um, go on to that now. So Offa was um, a king of Mercia. That was one of the counties of um, Anglo-Saxons times um, from AD 757 to 796 and he was a proud and powerful king it says. Uh, Mercy was actually the strongest kingdom in Anglo-Saxon England, England and so he was one of the most powerful kings because of that. Now he made the first penny coins so we've got him to thank for pennies but they were made from silver and they were known as offers pennies and he actually put a picture of himself on the coins um, he modelled himself after a, a Roman emperor, so he was trying to make himself look really important. So I was thinking that 
you know, King Offa making the first pennies, that shows that the Anglo-Saxons were capable of mining, doesn't it? And minting their own coins, which is actually when you press the metal into a coin shape. And they must have been able to reproduce these over and over again, which is quite an industrious thing. They must have had a factory or something. And they must have been able to distribute them and they must have had a system for trading. So that tells us that they were quite well educated as well. So look how much we can learn just from one little thing. Um, he had some loyal friends offer and he actually had allies. An ally is a friend who's in a different country, maybe a, a different king. And he was actually friends with a French king called Charlemagne. And he was a really powerful king, the most powerful king in Europe at the time. And so um, that was a good capability because it meant that if um, England were was attacked, he had an ally to call upon for troops or maybe money if they ran out of uh, funds. Um, but King Offal wasn't friends with all the Anglo-Saxon leaders. Um, they did fight amongst each other. I did say that last history lesson. And so he fought with them. He took over the smaller kingdoms of East Anglia and Kent. And it made the Kingdom of Mercia more powerful, but it meant that he needed to think of a way to defend his, um, his territory. And so what Offal did is he created a dike to keep his land safe. Now, the main people that he didn't get on with were, were, was the Welsh um, Kingdom of Powys, which is where Wales is today. Uh, he fought them on lots of different occasions. So he built this long bank of earth along the border between England and Wales. And it was known as Offa's Dyke. And you might have seen that in your line drawings in art. And you can still see that today. In fact, I'm going to show you some pictures now of that um, dyke, just so you can see how impressive it was. So this is actually a picture that was taken recently of the dike. So you can see this big mound of earth that was um, created. So that shows us that the um, Anglo-Saxon people were capable of engineering. They had to come up with a way to move all this earth um, and put it into you know, a shape, I suppose, on the land. They had to come up with a way of um, organizing the workforce. And you can see that this is just a little map of the corner of Wales. You can see Wales there. And this dike stretched from the top of Wales all the way down to the south of Wales, where, um, where you've got that channel, okay? So Bristol's about here. If you've ever been to Bristol, you would have been near Offa's Dyke. Here's just a bit of a close-up picture of the coins that he minted. He actually put his queen on some of the coins as well. Um, okay. So a few capabilities there. I've written things like money and wealth, defences and engineering, foreign links and allies as being some of the capabilities and achievements. So now I want us to look at another famous Anglo-Saxon called Venerable Bede. So again, we're going to think, who was he? What did he achieve? What was he capable of? And make some notes on your mind map as we discuss him. Um, so the Venerable Bede, he was... Um, actually made a saint. So you might have heard him called Saint Bede or the Venerable Bede. And he was a monk and he was an early historian of the Church of England. And so if you want to find out some more information about him, there is a link there to click on. But let me just tell you a few things about him. Um, so he was an early historian. He used to do lots of research about how the churches of England came to be, which might sound like a really boring thing. But of course, it meant that he actually was um, wise enough to think, I want to record how our people have developed. I want to write down and record what the history is of, of our people. And we can still actually look at what he wrote because he wrote this book called The Ecclesiastical History, uh, sorry, Ecclesiastical History of the English People. And he wrote that book back in 731. But you can still buy this book today, not the original one, of course, because that will be in a museum somewhere. But it's been reprinted and reprinted and you can still read it today. And it's a really valuable source of information. So maybe have a think about why that book was so important. There is another link there to a video. Now, another thing that this book tells us is how amazing um, the Anglo-Saxons were at recording information on paper. They used parchment. Um, they had beautiful design ideas. They were called illuminations, these kinds of letters where they, they really decorate the first letter of a page. You might have seen it in fairy stories. So that was an achievement, that legacy of um, creative writing and beautiful design. Final thing I want to show you is the Venerable Bede's tomb. Now, if you have a look at this, where do you think the Venerable Bede was um, buried? Where would you find a scene like this? 
Well, of course, you'd find it in a church or maybe a cathedral even. I can't actually remember which cathedral he was buried in, but I'm sure you could find that information out using the link I showed you before. But let's just look. You know, the Anglo-Saxons were capable of creating beautiful objects. They were real craftsmen, weren't they? Like these candlesticks and working with metal. Um, they were, this also reminds us that they created churches and cathedrals, parts of which can still be seen today. I don't know if anyone's been down to Cold Waltham recently, which is near Billingshurst, but part of that is still an Anglo-Saxon um, workmanship, part of their church, which is quite amazing. Okay, so now I want you to think about your task. You might want to pause the video at this point, make some more notes on your mind map. You might have stopped me at various points. You might want to go back and just listen to a few things again, because I did say quite a lot of stuff just then, trying to give you a lot of information. Um, so you've got two tasks to choose from. Um, please just choose one of these. The first task is to create a list of greatest achievements. So look back over your mind map notes and decide which achievement or which thing you've learned that was the greatest or the most important achievement in your opinion and label that as number one. And then I want you to go through and think about maybe what was the second most important achievement or capability and then the third. And then I want you to write a list with number one at the top, then number two, number three. And perhaps you could use some creative artistic flair like that, you know, the type that was used in Bede's manuscripts. You could use these illuminated letters. There's lots of things that you can find on the internet to help you with illuminating letters. Okay, just be creative with your font style. Um, yeah. The second task, I want you to either have or write a debate. So you can have a debate with members of your household if you've got some other people there who are free and who like to have a bit of a debate. Um, or if you don't have anyone to debate with, but you still want to do that kind of task, you could choose to complete some persuasive writing to explain your view. So think about the language that you've learned when writing your persuasive letters recently. Um, so choose a statement like this. You could choose this one or another one, but it needs to be a statement. So this could be a statement. The greatest achievement of the Anglo-Saxons was buildings and architecture. So you've got to think, do you agree with that or do you disagree? But of course, a good debater always writes some for and against points just so that they understand both the viewpoints. So then you could have a debate and see what your family think. OK. Um, it could, will also give you a chance to impress them with what you know about the Anglo-Saxons. So if you um, choose any of these tasks, you could record your debate, you could send us in a picture of your writing. We'd love to see it. I hope you enjoy your history task today and I will see you next time. Okay, bye everyone.